Okay, here's the drawing for the next exercise, sample two. I'll go ahead and turn to this. And let's take a look at this drawing and, and um, come up with a game plan. So we are still dealing in aluminum, a one by four by six block, uh, still one inch thick, still four inches wide, still six inches thick, and the origin is still going to be the top left rear corner. So really there's not going to be anything we need to do as far as our material size goes on the document control dialog if we're doing this immediately after finishing sample one. Uh, looking at this, there are three features that need to be created. We've got a two inch bore, uh, four inches over in the X at Y minus two. And then we have a bolt hole pattern around that which is seven holes on a three inch diameter bolt circle and these are going to be three eighths holes. Uh, we will be creating points for these initially. And then uh, over on this end of the part we have a rectangular array or what in Gibbs Cam is called a matrix of hole, holes that are uh, three sixteenths, a uh, half inch deep. Uh, it, the matrix consists of one, two, three, four, five rows of holes and one, two, three columns of holes uh, starting at this corner which is X1, Y minus three and then our rows are a half inch apart as are our, col uh, sorry, our columns are a half inch apart as are our rows. Uh, so a fairly simple 15 hole pattern um, and that's the order that I'm going to do things. I'm going to draw this circle, then I'll create the bolt circle, then I'm going to create this matrix or rectangular array here. All right, so first off, uh, follow along. Uh, I'll be drawing a two inch diameter hole or a two inch diameter circle uh, at X4, Y minus two, and then creating a seven hole bolt pattern around that on a three inch bolt circle. So in Gibbs Cam, uh, make sure that you have sample one saved and then we're going to create a new part because we need a separate file for each of these parts because we're going to be putting toolpath on them tomorrow so i'm going to create a part called sample two i really don't need to change anything else uh, as far as my material size goes uh, that actually holds three true for the first three exercises that we're going to do in uh, so we're focused solely on geometry creation, and then after sample three, we'll start changing up our material sizes. Uh, so I'm going to hit save, I'm going to X out, and I'm going to open my geometry palette. Just going to move it kind of out of the way here. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is draw a circle. And what I know about that circle is its radius and center point. So I'm going to use this first button here, circle to find my radius and center point. Now, I don't have one of the yellow dots or one of the yellow points at my center point, so I'm going to click the drop down where it says center point. I'm going to click here and just type in the center point, X4, tab, Y minus 2, tab, Z0, because we draw everything at Z0 right now. And the radius is half of the diameter. The diameter of this hole is 2 inches. Uh, half of that obviously is 1, but if it were some uh, less regular number or if I just wasn't certain what half of 2 is I can type 2 divided by 2 and when I hit tab it will show me the, the answer. Alright now I'm not creating any other circles with this dialog so I can just hit enter which is the same as clicking the single feature button so I just hit enter it creates that circle exits me back out to my top level geometry dialog or my geometry palette. Alright now for the bolt hole pattern we're going to create points and there's a function here to automatically create a bolt circle. All right, looking at this dialog, uh, there's a little bit going on here, but not much. We've got a checkbox for a full bolt circle. If I uncheck that, I get this added field here, uh, an angle between holes. If it's a full bolt circle, we don't need the angle between holes because it's simply 360 divided by the number of holes in the bolt pattern. Uh, so this is going to be a full bolt circle. The radius of the bolt circle again is half of the bolt, uh, the diameter of the bolt circle. Our print specifies diameter, so three divided by two is an inch and a half radius. This is Z, and we draw everything at Z zero, so we leave that alone. This is the number of holes in the pattern. 
It's going to be seven. And I'm just tabbing through. Now we get to the, the important part. This is really the part of this exercise that I really want you paying attention to. Uh, because you'll figure out how to use the dialogue. There's no, no question about that. But there's a shortcut that you need to be aware of. This is the X value for the center of the bolt circle. This is the Y value for the center of the bolt, bolt circle, excuse me, um, which is the center of this hole. Um, we could simply type in the location X4, Y minus 2, no problem. Um, but there should be a way for me to ask the software for information like where is this circle located. And there is. Uh, there's actually two ways to do it. So is, if I have the X field highlighted or just have my insertion bar in there and this window is active, if I hold down the Alt key, my cursor changes from an arrow to a box. Anytime I see that box, I know that I'm, I am in interrogation mode. I'm getting ready to ask the software for the value of something or the location of something. Since I'm in an X field, if I hold down the Alt key and click on this circle, it's going to fill that X field in with the location of the center of the circle. It would also do it for a point location. If I'm in a Y field and I Alt click on pretty much the same location on that circle or anywhere on the circle, it will fill in the Y value. And just so you know, if I'm in a Z field and there's some random value in there and I Alt click on that circle, it will fill in the Z location of that circle. Now, just so you know, if I'm in a radius field and I alt click on a circle, it, it will fill in the radius of that circle. That's a two inch diameter, one inch radius circle. Uh, if I'm in a diameter field and I alt click on a circle, it will give me the diameter of a circle. Pretty much the only diameter field in Gibbs Cam is going to be a tool diameter, but it will fill it in. And just so you know, uh, if I go back out here, if I've got a line on my screen, and I'm in an angle field, and this happens to be an angle field, and I alt click on a line, it will give me the angle of that line. So alt by itself will give me a single value. It'll give me the X or the Y or the Z value of a circle center, the center of a circle or a point location. It can give me the radius or the diameter of a circle, and it can give me the angle of a line. Now there's another interrogation mode that I can use. Let me zero out the uh, X and Y and I'm going to put a random value in Z. All right, the second interrogation mode I get to by holding down Shift and Alt together. And as long as my cursor is in an X or a Y or a Z field and I Shift Alt click on that circle or a point, it will fill in the entire data set X, Y, and Z all at one time. All right, so full bolt circle, radius of inch and a half at Z0 because we draw everything at Z0. The pattern is going to be seven holes centered at X4, Y minus two, and we're going to clock it to, if I go back to my drawing, Right now it's set to zero, which is right out this line here. There is no hole there. Uh, we can look at this and tell there's a hole straight up at X4 inches, uh, straight up at 90 degrees. So if I go back over here and clock this to 90 degrees, I'll end up with a hole straight up. This will be the first hole created. Generally speaking, I don't care that it's the first hole, but it will be the, the first of this bolt pattern created. Uh, additionally, I've got radio buttons for whether I want it to proceed from this first hole clockwise or counterclockwise. Again, in this case with a full bolt circle, I'm really not that concerned about it. And there's our bolt circle. All right, in looking at our matrix or our rectangular array, our first hole or our reference corner that the print gives us is at X1 and Y minus 3. And then again, there are three columns that are a half inch apart and five rows that are also a half inch apart. So let's set that up. If I go back to point, 
there is a function here for a matrix or a rectangular array of points. All right, this is probably the most complicated or the you know the most fields to enter of any geometry creation dialog that I can think of. Uh, there are nine fields, a checkbox, and a do it button. However, this field here, delta x1, delta just indicating that it's an incremental value. Delta x1, if we follow the leader lines over, this is an offset between the first hole and consecutive rows. So it has the effect, if you enter a value other than zero in here, of tilting your rectangular array to the left or to the right. This value here, delta y2, incremental y value number two, is an offset value to the columns, to the first hole in two consecutive columns. So it has a, uh, if you enter a value here, it has the effect of tilting it uphill or downhill, working from left to right or right to left. Uh, both of these values, I've never seen a real part where these were anything other than zero. I know that they exist, and if they do, you have control over it here. But for the most part, if you're creating a rectangular array, uh, this value and this value are going to be zero. Additionally, this number here, this value here is Z, and we draw everything at Z zero right now. So that uh, of the nine values, that leaves us six values. One, two, three windows or three values to define the rows, and one, two, three values to define the columns. All right, so our part starts at x3, sorry, uh, x1, y minus 3. And we have five rows that are a half inch apart. And we have three columns that are a half inch apart. If I hit do it, there's our array. Now let me undo that for just a moment. And let's go back to our drawing for just a moment. What if this point here was referenced on the drawing rather than the point at the bottom? This point here would be at uh, y minus 1. This is at 3. That would be 2.5. That would be 2. That would be 1.5. That would be 1 inch. So y minus 1. What if this was what was referenced on our drawing rather than the bottom hole? Let's go back to Gibbs and let's enter this as minus 1. If I hit do it now, my array is incorrect. And the reason is this incremental y1 is the distance between rows. But it's not just a distance. You can think of it as a direction as well. A positive half inch in the y is going up the screen. A negative half inch in the y would be going down the screen. So if my reference corner or if my reference row is the top row, then this would be a negative number, minus a half inch. And we end up with the correct array. The same thing in the x. Uh, this is not only a distance, it's a direction. But the long and short of it is, if we dimension this just the way that the sketch shows, where our reference corner is the lower left corner, then everything is in the positive, positive quadrant. This will be a positive, this will be a positive. If Instead of referencing the bottom row, we reference the top. This will be a negative. If instead of referencing the left row, we reference or the left column, we reference the right column, then this would be a negative. But as long as we're referencing the lower left corner, they'll both be positive. Now, lastly, and I'm just hitting Control Z to undo, we have an outline button which removes all of the interior holes and just leaves the holes around the border. Uh, this has been really handy for some of my customers who make a lot of aluminum cover plates uh, where there's just a series of, of you know, bolt holes around the outside of the plate. Um, so you have that as well. All right. So make sure you have sample one saved. Create a new part on the document control dialog, a new file that you're going to call sample 2. Your material is going to stay the same size, same clearance value, and create those three uh, features. A circle for your 2-inch bore, your bolt hole pattern, make sure that it's clocked to 90 degrees, 
and then the rectangular array or the matrix of holes. Again, the circle function, center point and radius for the circle. And then the point function, you got the bolt circle, and then you have the matrix.